Okay, so here's my uh, problem with this curve. Is I joined these two layouts in different years. This was done the first summer, this was done the second summer, and I accidentally bought three quarter inch foam here. I thought I was going to get one inch, but uh, I got three quarters, probably because it was cheaper at the time when the wood prices were crazy. Then I get one inch foam here the second summer without realizing I should have got three quarter, but I like one better. And uh, so I got it home and realized it wasn't right and I couldn't take it back because it won't fit in my car. So that's why I got this joint right here. So I'm going to take out, I'm going to cut this cork here and I'm going to probably cut it here. And I put a piece across here over to here. So that's the advantage of using these brads. These are one quarter inch. These are probably one inch, but I use these brads on my cold cork to the foam. And that way, if I need to move it, change it completely, I can do that without too much trouble. This side, I painted some more ballast on here. So that's all right, because I'm not going to change the angle. I'm just going to get rid of this gap. I'm going to take these feeders and move them down over here. And then I'm going to put, I'll have feeders here for this side of the, uh, the, the bench work. This side is on a, a district booster separate from the uh, primary controller. So somewhere in here, I'm going to have to put some insulated joiners, probably right in here. I'm going to try to stagger this the connection of this curve so it's not got a, a straight connection, which is always hard to get the, uh, the curve right on those things. I'm going to clean this one up also, do similar work. So uh, when I'm done, uh, I'll show you the results.
Okay, as you saw from the previous train running event, these two uh, curved sections seem to be working pretty good. This one was never giving me much trouble, but I went ahead and uh, changed the underlying cork. You can see I didn't get it quite level here. I don't care, as long as it doesn't derail. And then also, this one over here, I changed the underlying cork. Right here, you can see where I kind of weaved the two insulated joiners. So one is further from the other one. So it doesn't give you that, that kinking effect quite as bad. So this one, I think I have a dozen nails, nails, track nails in it within about six inches. So hopefully it's not going to move. So yeah, that's, uh, hopefully that's the end of my derailments here on this curve. But it's the Freddie Model Railroad, so you never know. I'm going to show you a mail call here next. Okay, I got my divider up. I think I could use a light right over that. I have another one of these fluorescents I could put right in the middle. Here's my the first mail call. Whoa! You think that might be a little small to work on the coal pile? <laughs> Yeah, he's cute, but uh, he looks kind of puny there, so I wasn't sure the size, so I've got a bigger one coming this week also, but he could work around the fringes. And then uh, on the other side, the big reveal, I got this Magic Pan Bakeries. So I'm going to put it over here. I haven't developed the track plan yet. I've just disconnected what I had there, and I'll reroute it. And uh, you can see that discoloration on the back of this divider. And uh, I could paint it again, but that's not going to remove the imprint. I think you can see the imprints on there. So definitely going to have to do something with that. I guess I could buy another three-quarter inch piece of foam and put it on there cover it up or I could get a background uh, scene I'm not sure what I'll do yet I think I'll ignore it for a while so yeah got that magic bakeries I've been thinking about this one for a while finally got one with a good price you know me sucker for a deal thanks for watching